Using the EMC Ionics Unified Infrastructure Manager, let's take a look how easy it is to, de to deploy a vBlock. So we're currently logging in, we're taking a look at our available capacity as well as our service, our capacity of our service qualities for our vBlock 1. And now that we see that we have available capacity, we're going to go ahead and take a look to see what services are already predefined. And we see that we don't have a service offering that uh, meets our needs, so we're going to go ahead and create a new one. During the process, we'll go ahead and let's uh, give this guy a service name of Acme Engineering 1. And let's go ahead and provision him out on our vBlock 1 in our California location. As you can see, it's go ahead, it's went ahead and created the service. And now we need to define some specifics about the service offering. In this case, we've got four servers, and we're going to add a add into the service offering, each with a unique host name and description. And in our case, we're actually going to provide two of those at a gold level and two of those at a platinum level. And we'll go ahead and save that. Now we'll take a look at the operating systems. We can see that now they're deployed, and we need to go ahead and add some storage to them now. So let's go ahead and add some storage. Uh, in this case, we'll call it uh, Shared Data Store 2, and we'll go ahead and make it 100, 100 gig of our Tier 1 storage. And let's go ahead and go over to our networks, and. We can take a look and we see that our uh, available VLANs are what we need. So let's go ahead and close this guy. And now let's go, to go ahead and let's go ahead and provision them out. Uh, you can see that they're being provisioning is in progress. And down below you can see the current status of those. So provisioning has been initiated. And now the provisioning is successful. Once we have the vBlock uh, provisioned, we're going to go ahead and use the VMware vCloud Service Director to create a virtual app, a, create a vApp, and a series of VMs. In this case, we're going to go ahead and define a new organization. Uh, and we'll call it Acme Corporation. And provide it a brief description. And let's go ahead and move on to the next. And in our scenario, we're not going to use any type of authentication services. So let's go ahead and create a unique user profile. And we'll go ahead and provide all the contact information for our user. And we're going to allow this user, since he's going to be the head of our department, or he, since he's the head of our application team, we're going to allow him to create up to 100 VMs. And we're going to go ahead and publish this offering out to other catalogs. And we can configure email preferences if we would like to. And we're going to go ahead and set the quotas for this user. And let's go ahead and we'll check everything over and let's finish it. So now let's go ahead and go to our provided provider virtual data center and we can see that we're going to do an allocation pool. And our allocation pool, we're only going to allocate 50% of the resources. And of course enable thin provisioning. And this time, let's go ahead uh, and create a name for our new organization. This will be our Acme Virtual Data Center. And we'll add networks in after we create the data center. In this case, we're going to do a public network. Uh, we also have options to do NATed as well as fenced. So we're going to go ahead and do a public network and provide him a name for essentially what's a port group. And 
And let's go ahead and finish him up. And now we can see that our Acme organization is out there. So let's go to our V apps. We have a web and SQL V app predefined. So let's go ahead and deploy the virtual machines. Uh, we only need this for a couple hours of testing, so let's just set, select it for 12 hours. And you'll see that they are now deployed and available in the consoles.